Hi, it's Jan Beta, and if you're following my channel, you probably know that uh, apart from the usual retro computer stuff, I often get into restorations of beautiful old uh, audio equipment, sometimes newer audio equipment. This is an old one. It is a Sensui Stereo Receiver 881, which belongs to a co-worker and friend of mine, and actually my birthday present for him was... Uh, to refurb this thing. It has some slight hum issues. It is fully working. It has some slight hum issues. It has some lights missing and uh, some scratchy potential meters and stuff like that. So I'm just going to give this uh, kind of a service treatment. It looks pretty pristine apart from some dust that probably uh, settled on this while it was uh, sitting in the lab here. Uh, yeah. He was using this every day, it sounds amazing. I think what I'm going to have to do is to replace all the electrolytic capacitors. This is a 1974 unit, uh, pretty good one. If you find any sensory stuff from the 70s uh, for reasonable prices, go ahead and buy it. I can't uh, really recommend it enough. Very well made machines. And uh, this is no exception. I guess. I haven't looked inside yet. I looked a bit into the, the service manual uh, to find out which capacitors I'm going to need and stuff like that. So it appears to be a very well-made unit. Uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just open this up and take a look inside. So I'm going to try not to scratch the wood on it. <laughs> because that's a pretty nice condition. Oh, this comes with two aux inputs, which is pretty nice for um, everyday use nowadays because you usually would connect like an mp3 player device or something uh, with uh, Wi-Fi to it. Tuning knob. The knobs all feel pretty nice. It has microphone input for like parties, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's not really a common thing uh, these days. FM muting, two tape monitors, so it has two um, separate tape inputs as well. It can run on four channel stuff with an adapter, it says here. Can switch to mono, you can uh, just um, loudness usually just bumps up the bass and the treble a bit. Uh, you have this combined balance, which is the inner ring and the outer ring is volume. Then you have treble, mid-range, bass. You also have filters, which was pretty common in the day. Uh, you have an audio muting button. <laughs> and you can connect three pairs of speakers, actually. A, B, C. And you can run A and B and A and C simultaneously, if you want to. Uh, yeah. Phones, which has an adapter in it. I think it's missing the, the ring here should have a black black ring like the microphone. So this wood is just it's just wood veneer of course. It's uh this is like cheaper wood and this is like I think walnut or something. So here we are. Um this I think the whole front this PCB and this part is uh for the radio receiver. I think this is the receiver board this is the um capacitor that is moving with the um, scale there. Oh, somebody replaced some lights here. I can see that right away. There has been something going on with this. Uh, I have to do some cleaning on this and replace some capacitors. I believe this is the the driver board with the preamp section in it. And actually the, the drivers themselves are on the back side here. There's heat sinks protruding out of the back of the machine. Which is pretty nice design, of course. So I think um, I have to access this from the back side, really. I recap the main driver board. I can access this from the front side here. This is like the power supply board underneath there. I'm going to replace the capacitors on there as well. I'm not going to touch the... or maybe... Maybe I'll replace some of the capacitors on here, they look pretty old. This is a 1974 unit, but the radio reception works fine. 
so that's all right. Wow, it's, okay, this just came loose here. Probably going to replace it with some new tape. I'm going to replace the bulbs in front here, if I can reach them. Which I think should be possible if I remove the front bezel here. Yeah, okay, let's get right into it. Okay, quick function test. Turning the speakers off and the volume down for turning this on. Okay, turning it on. Wow, the relay makes a ringing sound there. That's nice. Okay, and it hums on the speakers. So that's a sign. Don't know if you can see here that. There's a hum. And a distinct noise. That's the funnel. Okay. There's, a, there's like a mains hum on the speakers. Mm. Don't know if you can hear that on camera, so I'm <laughs> reproducing it. Um, the lights, this light is off. There's one light missing here, so I'm going to replace the lights, I guess. Uh, I think the indicator lights are all there. Funnel light is a bit brighter, it seems. But those are all there, the top row of lights is all there, and uh, the scale lights have to be replaced. So yeah, that's definitely what I'm going to do. Uh, the hum probably comes from uh, some leaky capacitors in the power supply section. So I'm going to do something of that. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> it is working, so uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Maybe if I turn the mic level down, does that make anything better? No. Still hums. And it's independent of the volume, so I can be pretty sure that it's uh, because of capacitors that feed the whole circuitry, not uh, the audio circuitry. So, not only the audio circuitry. So that's probably an indicator of leaky capacitors in the power supply section which I'm going to replace with good uh, Panasonic FC or FM I think I have FC mostly in stock uh, capacitors and I am going to see if I can access the board from the bottom there so I can get to the power supply board which was in the back of the unit Speaking of which, uh, the back of the unit, here's our three speaker, pairs of speaker connectors, uh, 3.15 amp fuse, slow blow fuse, um, this is the 220 volts version, can't be rewired unfortunately I think, we'll have to see about that, um, I have to clean the connectors here a bit, there's our inputs, like two aux inputs, one funnel input, uh, the four, four channel adapters so you could uh, so you could listen to quadraphonic uh, stuff, which was pretty uh, common back in the day and never really got through. And here's our output transistors, actually. I don't know if you can see it properly. You can see them shimmering through the fins there. They are actually mounted on the outside of the, of the amplifier. Which is, of course, which is a very nice feature for um, thermal stuff. They get cooling uh, much better cooling as if they were in the case there. So there's airflow from outside the case here. Pretty nice feature. Um, pretty interesting if you can remove this whole thing from the outside. I think you m probably can. Maybe I'll look into that and replace the um, thermal grease that's probably on there or the thermal pads, which would be a good idea after. Uh, 45 years. <laughs> this is an old unit. So here's the back of the unit and this is really in pristine condition. I have never seen an old amplifier that has this good uh, condition on the back side. So um, yeah, this basically looks like new. There's a few... There's a bit of dirt here, a bit of crud, but uh, it basically looks like new. Which is kind of remarkable given that it's a 1974 or thereabouts amplifier. So there are screws here, so I assume 
Yeah, these are shorter screws. I assume I can just remove the screws and take off the whole back cover. Yep, there we go. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta love these circuit board boards that were actually hand drawn and not uh, machine calculated. We can see that by the rounded uh, traces there. Very nice. This looks very nice. Lovely. Yeah, lovely, lovely unit. And there's a lot of um, point to point stuff wiring going on here. That's uh, yeah. There's actually a little PCB there. Uh, for the input stuff. Wow, okay, it has a lot of capacitors in there. Uh, I think we can remove this whole board here by removing the screws that are located around the parameter here. So that would be, yeah, that would actually be easy to work on. Let's see. So to remove the power supply board it seems to be just the screws that we saw from the bottom there. I am going to remove this um, driver or preamp board first, which I think is just a PCB that's uh, fitted to a connector on the other PCB. So I have to remove that to be able to work on the other one, I think. And this can be, yeah, probably, probably can leave the other um, PCB in there because I can then uh, reach down there. I think this is just affixed with two screws there. Should be easy to get off. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so this is our main preamp board here. I can just this is like like in a PC. It's just like a plug-in card with an edge connector. <laughs> Nice. So, yeah, this is what it looks like. I have to replace the capacitors. These are the most important, um, the most important parts uh, for the sound itself, I think. So, and the hum probably comes from one of the capacitors on this board here. The big main filter caps mostly uh, hold up pretty well. And they are pretty expensive to replace, so I'm probably just going to leave them as is. Yeah, I'm just going to replace the ones on this board and the ones on this little board for now and see if that helps with the hum. Okay, the first one I removed from the uh, actual power supply board is a special one because it has three pins. <laughs> So we have A, B, and minus. Minus is the uh, black one here. And uh, B supposedly is just blank, which is pretty interesting. It isn't connected on the board, so it's, it's just, uh, yeah. It's an interesting thing. For whatever reason, this has uh, three pins, and one is not connected. Probably for stability or something. I don't know. <laughs> Crazy times. So and here's where it goes on the board and you can see that uh, the one pin here is connected. That's probably where the B pin is. <laughs> so uh, yeah, interesting, interesting. Also, as usual, there's quite some size difference. Both capacitors are 1000 microfarad 50 volt cups. Wow. <laughs> Okay, this one looks a bit bulgy from the bottom there, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, most of these older caps don't have like uh, indentations on top where they are supposed to bulge. Uh, they bulge on the bottom because that's made of plastic sometimes and it's, yeah, the gas just escapes there. So this is probably bad.
So, a couple of days later, I have ordered the uh, missing capacitors, hopefully all of them. Uh, these green ones are bipolar Nichicon uh, Muse caps, which are pretty good and uh, they are aimed at uh, audio stuff. So these are the go-to bipolar <laughs> caps today because um, most brands don't make bipolar electrolytics anymore because you can easily, in most cases, easily replace them with star, some uh, polyester film capacitor or stuff, stuff like that, which are um, better, electrically speaking, although they have slightly different uh, characteristics than these have, and I tend to go with uh, the ones that are closest to the uh, capacitors that were originally in there, so I ordered these. Uh, Here's some other bipolar caps from Nichicon, and these are Panasonic FC 100 microfarad standard uh, caps that I, yeah, I, do, I didn't have 100 microfarad caps that could take 50 volts, so, or these. So, let the recapping <laughs> continue. <laughs> So that's our preamp board, fully recapped. Uh, let's go on with the power supply and add the missing capacitors there. Power supply board uh, looks good. All the capacitors replaced in there, which was kind of it was a bit fiddly with the wires coming from the back of the board. But I desoldered some and soldered them back on and stuff like that, and it should uh, be perfectly fine, I guess. Let's reassemble this briefly and see if it still works <coughs> before we continue. So with the preamp board and the um, power supply board recapped, let's try if this still works. And if the hum is gone, which I think it will, probably, hopefully. Okay, still turns on, which is a good sign. Let's turn on the speakers. And it still hums. Ah. That's not so great. <laughs> Still arms. So maybe, maybe it's the mains filter capacitors. I was hoping, to, uh, I was hoping not to replace those because they are usually pretty expensive, and usually they are still fine in these machines. But yeah, might be it. There's still some significant 100 hertz uh, hum. Which definitely comes from the mains. So probably we'll have to replace the filter caps as well. That's a bummer. Okay, the next board I want to recap is this uh, one, which is kind of directly attached to the inputs on the back side here. Uh, there's the inputs for the uh, different channels there. And I think it's just hanging off this uh, channel switching thing here, uh, which it's partially it's switching here, and the other part of the switching is done here, which is pretty complicated. This is like the 
you the input uh, selector. I think I want to detach this whole rod here and uh, try to work on this and try if this comes out. So it's obviously, let's just put it in this position. This is the, the leftmost position, so <laughs> take a note of that. Let's see if I can just remove this thing here. So this should be somehow, I don't know how, I have to loosen these screws a bit more so I can... Yes, no. No, okay. Okay. So now we are... Get this off here. Can we attach this to here? Yeah, that's another switch. We're going to leave that in the leftmost position. I only want this board and I think the board is only attached to the rotary switch here. At least it seems to be so. Let's, let's see if we can get it out. So this is like a bit of a... we need to remove the nut there I think. And this washer thing that's underneath there. Okay, so that's no, there's no way we have to remove the whole bracket here, uh, which is probably held in with like two screws or something. Let's see. There's one screw on the back. Only one of the screws. And there should be another screw here. Yeah, it's just a one screw, a two screw operation there. Two screws. The whole thing off. Will I get it off without damaging anything? <laughs> there it comes. Just need to put this aside. And now should be able to work on this actually, hopefully. Yeah, we should just go for it. Should replace these. And there's another little board without any capacitors. At least without any electrolytics for the for the inputs. So we're going to leave that as is. Luckily we don't have to dig deeper. This is uh, deep enough for me already. Uh, yeah, and while I'm here I'm going to spray some contact cleaner in there. To replace the capacitors. Okay. Okay, this little board is all recapped now. Let's put it back in. Uh, I think this goes like so. Probably so. If I ever get it back in, that is. So here's the uh, channel switch, the front panel is here. This is uh, one microfarad capacitor that's probably there for um, kind of debouncing the uh, inputs there. 
so it doesn't uh, make a clicking noise. So I'm going to replace that too because because I can. I think I can. <laughs> Strong course there. So I should probably just cut it off before I do too much damage there. And replace it. There we go. So in order to get to the capacitors that are um, behind the tone controls and the switches here, um, which are also responsible for the tone control stuff, I'll have to take off the whole faceplate, which I am going to do anyway because I want to replace some of the lamps here that are missing, or that are burned out. Uh, so I have to take off all these knobs, and I am... I think I keep these in the leftmost position, the tone controls in the middle position, mic level zero. So I'm just gonna, uh, you can pull these out, basically, because they're just stuck on. And then I'm going to give them a good bath. <laughs> so this is a two-piece, I think. Should just pull out as well, I guess. Yes, it does. Okay. So there's a, an inner ring and an outer ring, so to say. Okay. So there are two screws, I believe, on top. I don't know if there are any on the bottom. Let's find out. So, and here's a, there's a nut, and there's a nut, and there's a nut. To remove these. No, oh, there's no screws on the bottom, actually. So as for not scratching the aluminum uh, faceplate, I am going to put some electrical tape on here. Or like some cello tape on my pliers. Okay, here we are. Let's do this. So I usually just, literally, just put this over here, like so. This prevents scratches. So here's the botched uh, mains power switch with, I don't think this is original, this is like glued on the original switch and there's a giant spring <laughs> behind there which, I don't know, it just looks wrong, kind of. And also the switch itself is like this uh, flimsy looking little thing. I don't think this is the original switch, but it works and I don't have a replacement for it so I'm probably going to leave it in. I think originally this is like one of those square uh, things and the spring should be something like this really. So now I can reach the screws that hold in the whole um, white plastic that is the lights assembly there that I should be able to take out afterwards. Whoops. I should be able to take this out after I remove the screws here. Being very careful with the uh, ribbon from the tuning, the tuning uh, assembly here. Yeah, this just comes loose and it should, I should be able to just flip it over here. Ah, there we go. There's three bulbs and I'm just going to replace them all, I think. These are seven volts uh, 0.3 amps. And I think originally they should be 6.3 volts, uh, 25 milliamps, uh, 250 milliamps. I'm, I'm sorry, 250 milliamps, 6.3 volts, is what is recommended by the service manual. So these should be a tiny bit brighter, really. I guess. Let's see if it still works. Yes. Mm. 
don't want to fasten these too tightly because this is pretty old plastic and it uh, doesn't help that it had like heat and uh, UV from the lamps uh, for years and years. There are two more of those fuse lamps which you can just, they are 6.3 volts, 25, uh, 250 milliamps pilot lamps, fuse lamps um, you can just buy them in your your regular electronics store usually um, I think there are two screws per meter that hold these plastic things in and then I should be able to access the lights there Let's see. because one of those is dimmer than the other which uh, doesn't look nice actually so let's see if we can get these off and replace the lamps in there maybe <laughs> so far so good let's see yeah okay there we are ah they pop out this direction to the okay so this one was replaced at some point this is like another style lamp and it's like a 12 volt lamp this is probably from some car or something hmm. okay fair enough ah <laughs> this should be the same size uh, fuse lamp for every everyone here. Okay, I have to get the camera out of the way. So, a lot of swearing. Uh, later, I ended up soldering one side of the fuse lamp with a little blob there. Which the previous uh, repair person also did with the previous bulb because these uh, holders are so bent that they won't hold the fuse lamp reliably. So I had to improvise basically. So that's that's what I came up with. It's not ideal of course because at some point you would have to replace this again. But I didn't make anything worse I guess because it already was banned. Could replace these holders but it's pretty tough. These are like um, pointing that direction and are soldered to this board here. So it's a pretty special kind of fuse holder I guess. Uh, that is not that trivial to find. Okay, at least there's the... Oh, and there's a solar too. The original lamp solar too. Okay. So the, this is probably the way this works. One side is soldered. Okay. So I didn't... Didn't do anything that was not according to plan. And this is like a 7 volts, 0.3 amps, like the other one. So I'm, I'm, if I'm going to put a 6.3 amp one in there, we are going to be fine. And I'm going to solder one side to the holder as, the, as it's probably done from factory. To add some flux and some fresh solder. That's how I did it on the other one too. And you have to wait quite a significant time to the solder actually stick. Yeah, and these holders don't work very well. That's probably that's probably the only way to reasonably attach these lamps to them. Okay. Well, okay, so these are soldered. One side, it seems, was soldered from factory and um, I did the same again with the new lamps. Ah, that's a bit of a weird construction. Could have put um, better few solders there. Let's see if it still works. Yes, yeah, so and now they're evenly lit, which looks a lot better, and the whole scale is lit, which you probably can't see in this light, but uh, it is, trust me. <laughs> and as for these knobs, I can just pull them off as well. Okay, there. The aluminum part came off, I'm gonna glue that on back later. I think I have to remove all these screws and the nuts and washers there as well. And probably this one too. Okay. I think this is 
This is not attached to the board there. This isn't attached to the board there. This probably is. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, there's one. The board goes from here. So I have to probably remove these, this, and this screw here. Let's see. This is attached pretty good. So we should remove this as well so we can maneuver it. That's better. Okay, there we go. Now we got it in a position we can actually work with. And there's a lot of capacitors on there. So we're going to have to replace those as well. So here's the the tone board. And probably there's some stuff that causes hum as well. Uh, that we're going to replace the capacitors on. I'm going to clean everything as thoroughly as I can. There's a bit of sand in this unit, I don't know why. But we're going to clean that off. Capacitors, I think. Nice. Uh, I'm going to spray some color cleaner into the switches and stuff while I'm at it. While I can reach them so nicely. Okay, putting this back together. I have the service manual open as the PDF there. Uh, and yeah, that hopefully it's going to help. Okay, at this point I want to briefly check if this still works even. So uh, let's plug it in and see. What it does actually. Okay, it doesn't look too shabby. Nice. That did work. Okay, so the hum's still there. That's a bummer. But I guess that's because of the, the large filter caps there. Mm has to be like a mains voltage thing, I guess, because it's there uh, independently of the volume. Hmm, so we're going to have to replace those. I have to order some, I guess. So I am going to scrub the faceplate with some window cleaner and uh, like one of those microfiber cloths. There is some 
There's like a serial number printed underneath where the selector knob is. I'm just going to um, try this here and see if it drops away any of the silk screening on there, which it doesn't. Okay. I'm not going to clean this very thoroughly because I'm going to leave that to the current owner. <laughs> I am going to remove some of the stains there. Let's put it back on, I guess. So we are going to adjust the bias and the EDC offset now, I guess, because we have fully recapped this and it's electrically in a state where it's nearly fully refurbished, uh, except for the hum issue that is probably coming from the mains filter caps. Uh, that we have to replace still. So I'm going to order some mains filter caps. I'm going to ask the previous owner if he, uh, what he prefers, if we should go all the way and buy these uh, audiophile like 20 euros per capacitor, capacitors, or if we're just going to go with our normal 10,000 microfarad caps. <laughs> we're going to see about that. So we are going to adjust the DC offset. Uh, we do that by connecting a voltmeter across the speaker terminals. And you want this. You have to um, turn on the speakers, in this case um, speaker uh, pair A. I have turned on. You have, of course, to plug in mains. And you have to set the volume to zero and, uh, and or adjust uh, like and or have nothing connected all the knobs should be zero here and uh, yeah then you basically turn it on let it run for a while and you adjust this screw which is under this hole here uh, this little potentiometer VR01 and VR02 this supposedly is for the left channel this is for the right channel um, so you connect it to the left channel and adjust this for as close to zero volts as you can get and then you do the same thing for the other channel after you have let it warm up for a while. So let's just do that. Okay, that's not too bad. So um, while this warms up this should uh, go a bit lower with time. So I'm usually at least waiting like 10 minutes or so with the uh, machine running until I uh, set this. But this is not bad, 5 millivolts or 4 millivolts is not not bad. This is not going to hurt any speakers or anything. So this is very well adjusted already. Pretty nice. So I'm in the kitchen now and I soaked the knobs and uh, switches and uh, stuff in water and still it bang, which is a good uh, fat solvent. And now I'm going to attack it with a toothbrush and rinse it properly afterwards. So we're going to get rid of all the uh, crust on there, basically, which usually works pretty, pretty well. So I left this running for some time and adjusted uh, the little potentiometers there. And we are at this uh, kind of, we're under one millivolt uh, DC or a, lit o a bit over. It's a, lit a little bit fluctuating, but this is possibly the best we can get with this setup. So it's very much spot on uh, zero. So that's pretty good. Uh, let's adjust the idling current. For adjusting the idling current, or as it says in the 
service manual, which I'm going to link in the description, uh, the, what does it say, bias current volume, <laughs> you um, remove this fuse, which is, can't read it, uh, which fuse is it? I don't know, it doesn't say on the circuit board. Um, this fuse for the left channel, this fuse for the right channel, and you adjust the potentiometer here and here. For 30 milliamps, plus minus 1 milliamps, so this is a pretty correct, This you have to get this pretty uh, close to 30 milliamps, because this is the um, current that actually goes to the, um, the mains driver, uh, main driver transistors and that is biasing the, uh, this is like the, the idling current of the main transistors. So you get uh, better performance out of them if you set that right. And if you set it wrong, very wrong, you can uh, damage them in the long term. So we're going to be extra careful with this and connect the, um, we're going to remove the fuse one at a time, I think, and uh, adjust the little potentiometer. And of course, why while I'm doing this, I have this unplugged. The machine is unplugged, so that's, that's always a good idea if you're working on something that is mains powered. So plugging it in, trying to adjust this for 30 milliamps. This is like on 13 milliamps. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Okay, this adjustment is a bit easier. So we're going for exactly 13 here. So, okay, that's pretty, pretty accurate, I guess. 30.03 milliamps, so that's close enough for me. Let's do the other channel. Okay, I'm going to let this run for five minutes and then come back. So, five minutes later and we're still pretty close to 30. Okay, that's as close as we're going to get. 29.91, that's pretty much spot on. Okay. This is now officially adjusted for uh, DC offset and bias. So for the knobs that um, came apart, the plastic part and the aluminum part, I am going to use some uh, like standard household glue to put them in there because usually that's that's the best thing you can do. I'm just going to smear some on there. And put them in. And that's gonna hold fine. Because after all, if you're not pulling them out, they are not uh, under a lot of stress, so not going any not doing any experiments there. Just stand a glue. <laughs> So there we are, uh, 
fully working. I still have the hum issue. Um, I think that's due to the large capacitors, uh, the large mains filter capacitors, like 10,000 microfarad capacitors, uh, being bad. Um, yeah, I think I have to uh, discuss that with the owner of this machine, uh, which quality of capacitors he wants me to put in there before I continue with this. Uh, otherwise, this turned out really, really nicely and it still works. Everything uh, is perfectly working, doesn't make any weird stuff apart from the 100Hz hum. So, I call this finished for now. As I said, I am going to replace the uh, large capacitors and maybe make a video about it um, too when the time comes. But otherwise, I'm happy with it. So, uh, hopefully the owner is happy too. <laughs> so, happy, happy, happy. And Obviously, I hope you are happy too with this video and um, found it entertaining and informative. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment below, consider subscribing to this channel. There's uh, audio restorations like this from time to time. Mainly, I'm focused on uh, retro computer stuff. If you consider this worth a donation, check out my website, which is linked below and my Patreon site that's linked in the corner there. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Jan Beta. Hopefully see you again on this channel. See you next time. Bye!